Hello, welcome to my next video about the, the dark eye corals, and we're going to talk about ranged combat in more detail. Ranged combat works like this. You uh, declare your target, then you add a lot of modifiers, or depending on the situation, more or less modifiers on your attack value, on your ranged attack value. Then you roll the test. Your opponent has the chance to defend by using a dodge or by defending with a shield, which is um, made more difficult by a negative modifier. And when you hit, you simply roll damage. And depending on how close you are or far away of your opponent, there might be a modifier on the damage. You would make more damage or less damage. And that is the basic rules for a ranged combat. I'm going to plain explain this in detail. For example, I'm going through all the modifiers that can be applied to your attack value uh, when you're making uh, a ranged attack. The first modifier is one you always have to consider is your distance from your target. Um, every weapon has an a close, mid-range and long-range distance associated. And um, depending on where you are, um, for a close range you get a positive modifier and an additional uh, damage point on your attack. For mid-range it is your normal attack and normal damage. And for a long range you get a negative modifier on your attack and a minus one on your damage roll. And then the second thing you have to take into account always is the size of your enemy. The enemy can be a tiny, small, mid-size, large or huge. And depending on the size, you would also get a negative modifier or a positive modifier. Then if anybody of you is using moving your target or you, or if the target isn't moving at all, then you would get a positive modifier or negative modifier um, added to your attack value. And it uh, distinguishes between uh, fast movement and slow movement and such. Then there is sight. If the sight is somehow limited by low light or by fog, depending on how thick the fog is and how little light there is, you get a uh, limited side condition assigned, which can, like any condition, range from 1 to 4. 4 means you can't see at all, you cannot attack, and 1 to 3 would give you a negative modifier on your attack roll. And then there are rules for f shooting from a horse, and based on how the horse is moving at the moment, you get an a modifier applied to your attack value, or you might even not be too able to shoot at all. Another rule is explaining what to do when you're fighting into a, when you're shooting into a situation where friend and foes are in close combat. Um, it's pretty simple. You simply get another negative modifier on your attack, and there is no chance to hit your. Uh, your friends if you miss um yeah it's pretty simple then critical success and critical failure in a ranged combat for a critical success works pretty much like the critical success for attacks you roll a one you always have a critical success you still make the second roll if you fail the second roll then the defense of your opponent is halved and if you succeed in the second roll the defense of your opponent is halved and if you hit your opponent will be you will assign double your damage to the to your target and, and so it works exactly like the critical hit in uh, in melee combat and that's also the case for the critical failure in um, ranged combat when you make a critical failure a critical miss in ranged combat you have to roll again 
um, to see if it's really a critical failure. You roll a 20, you roll again. If you miss, then you get 1d6 plus 2 damage assigned damage that is not reduced by armor value. And if you succeed in your second roll, you simply have only missed without um, any consequences. And again, we have a critical miss chart here. As an optional rule, you would use it instead of the 1d6 plus 2 damage. You would roll 2d6 and see what result you get. And there is stuff in here like you've hit a friend or something. And this is... Next is about defending. Defending against... Um, a uh, ranged attack means you have to see that someone is shooting at you and then you have the chance to dodge the attack or to use a shield to block the attack and um, you get a negative modifier on your attack, on your defense roll based on if you are defending against a, a ranged, like a, a weapon like a bow, someone is shooting at you with a bow or a crossbow or if someone is using a throwing weapon. Throwing weapons are a bit easier to defense again, to dodge or to block. And there is also critical success and critical failure in the, in the defense role. If you have a critical success in your defense role, it is always a positive result, but you still make a second roll. And if you fail the second roll, it simply means um, your next defense you make in that turn is not reduced by two, by three, but only by two. And if you succeed in your second roll, you uh, succeed in the second defense roll, then you would get basically a free defense, and your next um, defense roll will not be reduced by three. And if you have a critical failure, in a defense roll, you roll again, and if you succeed in your second roll, you simply have not defended and get hit by the arrow or throwing weapon. And if you fail the second roll, your second defense roll, then you get 1d6 plus 2 damage assigned. Damage, again, that is not reduced by armor value. And again, you have an optional rule that would allow you to not assign the damage, but roll on this um, um, critical fail uh, chart. So, and the last step is described in range combat is um, the damage. Um, damage works pretty much like the damage in uh, for melee combat. Your weapon has a certain damage uh, assigned to like 1d6 plus 4 or something and um, you simply roll the d d6 at the number and that is the damage you assign. There's one difference regarding melee combat um, compared to melee combat and um, there is a modifier. If you're close to your target in the close range of your weapon you get plus one on your attack if you're in long range of your weapon then uh, you get minus one on your damage roll. But that is all. So then we have the list of possible combat skills for ranged combat. And um, there are not many. You have a skill for crossbows, a skill for bows, and a skill for throwing weapons. That's all. In the former editions of the Dark Eye, there were way more ranged combat weapons, for example, something like a blowgun or blowpipe, I'm not quite sure what the what the correct name is, and um, I don't know if they're going to bring this these skills back, they're a bit more exotic, and they might be described in uh, additional material that is going to be released. But I'm not sure, I just uh, thought I'd mention it. Then um, it is explained how you um, how loading your weapon um, works. Usually, it will use an, a combat round or two, or even more, depending on what weapon you're loading and how it is going to be loaded. If you have a special kind of of crossbow, then it would be like you'd use a lot of actions and a lot of turns 
to reload that crossbow. For bows it is usually a bit easier and uh, it's simply for every weapon it says how long it takes to reload the weapon. And you also can reduce the time to load for some weapons that can be uh, loaded in one turn or with only one action there may be it may be possible to make the loading um, go down to zero actions but you would still use the free action in your turn to load the weapon and this would allow you to shoot an, an arrow or throw a weapon every um, every turn uh, to do so to learn this um, to learn how to uh, use only a free action in loading a weapon or readying or throwing weapon you would have to learn a special ability then there is a rule describing uh, what happens to arrows and um, the bolts of a, of a crossbow uh, after you have shot, usually they are considered lost and you have to simply buy new ones. But there is also an optional rule that tells you you can roll if your uh, arrows and bows are still um, usable. The next section is about all the combat skills, the special abilities, the special combat abilities that you can have. And this will be a video of its own. Um, this was the video about range combat. If you have more questions about range combat, um, feel free to ask, write a comment, send me a message. I try to explain. And um, that's it for the range combat. And next will be about the special abilities in combat. So bye.